So, good evening, you beautiful people. I need to get that uh, little intro renewed, don't I? It still says Periscope, which was Twitter's video thing. Now it's X. I don't think it's called Periscope anymore. Uh, I'm going to change that. For those people who are here live, thank you so much if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on X now, formerly Twitter, if you're watching on LinkedIn, or you're watching the replay on YouTube, or you're listening to the replay maybe on the Acts on This TV audio experience on Spotify and iTunes and everywhere you get your podcast from. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you are joining for the first time, you've no idea who I am. My name is Ross. Um, I'm an actor and I run a website called Act On This, the TV Actors Network. I've run it now for 14 years. Um, and basically every single week we sit down with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, directors and producers in TV. I host either live Zoom calls just for our members or in-depth podcasts. And we are talking in-depth. I mean, even the Zoom calls are in-depth. Like Zoom calls can be two and a half hours long. Podcasts can be over three hours long. I mean, we really, really go deep on what it takes to have more success. Ultimately, just earn more money out of this, this industry as well. Like That's something that I'm really, really big on. I don't think actors talk enough about the thing that they struggle with the most, which is having the time and the money to invest back in their careers. So I'm like, why in the UK particularly do we make money a dirty word almost? Like it's not all, it can't all be about the craft because if you don't have any cash, you can't do the craft. So it's about, you know, all for me, it's all about the business of the business. That's what Acts on This is about. It's really getting a return on your investment so that you can leave your day job that you hate. You know, the day jobs that I, that I was in for 11 years when I left drama school. Um, so uh, that's what we do basically I've got loads to discuss with you guys tonight lots of people are um, are joining us live on Facebook Can K good to see you Sharon's in the house uh, Di's here Alex is here Natalie's here Sarah's here Josh is in the house Maya uh, Indra uh, Josh Indy Sarah um, everybody who's here live thank you so much for uh, for joining us um, loads to discuss tonight like I say um, some stuff that's happened on actsonthis.tv for members last week I want to recap on we had a, a really really good um, member only Zoom call last week with a top Manchester based agency called Alex Priestley Talent we had Alex um, CEO and head agent at Alex Priestley Talent and also her associate agent Georgia Padfield on for an incredible chat um, I know a lot of members in, Acts on, in the Acts on This community have been reaching out to Alex already for rep um, you know people have been hearing stuff back it was just a really honest open Deep dive into the agency, basically, and how you get signed, you know, by Alex, what she needs to see from you, what George needs to see from you. Uh, ultimately, to be like, you know, an appealing, um, what would the word be? Um, <laughs> when it's a, I'm going to say like proposition, but that's not like, I don't know if that's the right, I don't know if that's the right word. Basically, you know, whether, whether you would be a, um, you know, an asset to the agency. Or whether, you know, maybe they uh, already have somebody like you. I don't know. It's sort of like we basically dived into just making the best first impression possible when you're reaching out to uh, to agents in general, not just uh, Alex and Georgia. But that was a good one. Let me go over to uh, the website. And we might as well just start off with a little recap on that, actually. Let me just share my uh, screen with you. So this is on this.tv. We do this every week. We dive into the preview section. If you click on the preview section on the website, you can see everything that's been going down. Um, every single week, we have a top guest, really, really like the top, top people um, in the industry. Everybody, you know, from uh, top casting directors, like I say, to agents, actors, writers, directors, producers, um, just the best people, basically, the people who are the kindest, nicest people who... Uh, really run the industry, to be honest with you. People you really need to know exist. So this was the session with Alex. It's called Understanding What You Can Offer. That was like a really big message within this session last week. It was really understanding who you are, where you fit in the industry, and what you have to offer. And so many actors feel they've got so little to offer because they're like, the, the industry is against me, and there's a hierarchy, and everyone else is more important than me. No, they are not. You have, have absolutely tons to offer if you really embrace who you are, where you fit in the industry, and you know, and what it is that you uh, you have to give. So it was a two hour, no, yeah, two hours, just over two hours, about two hours and five minutes. This session, um, you'll find the full version in the members area, folks. If you are already a member of that's on this TV, but I'll play you out the little mashup that we do every time, a little preview of some of the things that we discussed on that chat. So you can see what you um, what you missed. And if you were there live, let me know what your major takeaway was from that chat. And let me know where you're at when it comes to rep as well. Uh, I can't remember where everybody's at in the you know in our community, like where it is when it comes to, um, you know, whether you're looking for rep, looking to change rep. Maybe, you, you know, you don't, you don't have any rep at all at the moment. 
Maybe you're really happy with your rep, but you're just looking to build more of a rapport with them, you know, strategize better, work more closely with your agent, you know, so you're both on the same page when it comes to cultivating opportunity for you in auditions within the industry. But here's a little bit of what you missed. um, And I'll keep an eye on the comments while we're playing this out. I'll see you in a sec. CEO and agent at Alex Priestley Talent. It's Alex Priestley and associate agent Georgia Padfield in the house. Ladies, welcome back to Act On This. How are you both? We're going to look at exactly what you guys do within the agency, how it works, how people can approach you for rep, the full shebang. It is non-stop, really. And the nice thing is because we've had some really big gigs booked on, it's just constantly sorting out the negotiations for that, the contracts. Let's look at a few of Alex Priestley Talent's clients then. We've got Mr. Connor Dean in the house. Connor came in and was like, you know, this is what I want to do. In a year, I want to have achieved this. In two years, I want to have achieved this. And it was manageable. If someone does come in and have confidence in themselves and own it, and also have brilliant experience and be realistic about where they are, where they can get to, how they're going to do that, the kind of things that they would be suitable for, all of that kind of general knowledge. It's so appealing to us. Tell us a little bit about Isabel. How did you sign Isabel then? Again, working on cracking stuff. And how have you nurtured Isabel's career? Doctors Hollyoaks and Ridley were all <laughs> cast within the same three weeks, would you say? Oh, wow. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. really that quick. <laughs> Bloody hell. She's like, I'm on fire. I just can't, I, yeah. you know, I can't stop booking work. Wow. We've got nine questions. We ask every agent who comes on here. If I don't have a showreel, can I send you a self tape or a recent audition I've done? Yes, please. Yeah. And even if you feel that there's something missing from your showreel, you can send a self tape as well. If I'm looking to change agents, should I mention why I'm leaving? I think, yeah, I think it's fine. You don't need to get into too much detail, but uh, you could just say it's not working. How can I work with my agent if I'm not getting auditions? Does that put you off as such if you are more TV film and they haven't got many credits as such? You have to have a really good sense of realistically where you belong. It's having a much better full understanding of what you can offer and bring to it so that you're not giving people an excuse to turn you down. Boom! Act on this TV. Get a membership. Get instant access to the full two-hour replay of that chat with Alex and Georgia. There, um, you see, we we dive really, really deep into the agency. We ask nine questions. We ask every agent who comes on Acts on this TV that every actor wants to know about. You know, when it comes to approaching that agent the right way, um, everything from email strategy to showreel, self tape strategy. Um, you know, when to leave their current agent. You know, what to say if they are doing that. How to do that amicably and you know with kindness. Um, um, you know, how to work with your agent if, you're, if you want to stay with them, but you're no longer getting auditions, you know, and you want to sort of uh, up the ante when it comes to opportunity. We just dive into everything. You see us uh, reverse engineer three of Alex and George's clients, why they signed them, the work that they're now doing. I mean, they're working on the biggest TV projects out there as well. Some are regulars in big stuff. Other people are working, you know, as um, as recurring characters um, in, you know, top, top sort of like three-part, six-part dramas. So really, really cool chat. Um, so go watch it if you've not seen that already. And like I say, if you're here live tonight, let me know what your favorite thing was. Or if you've even approached Alex and, uh, and Georgia for representation once you saw that chat. If you're going to approach them, don't do it before you watch that chat. Like, do <laughs> Make sure you watch that because they tell you literally exactly how to do it right. Same goes for any agent we've had on on this in the last 14 years. You'll find, I don't know, maybe 30 sessions in the members area with top agents over the last that we've done over the last two years. Um Watch them before you approach the agency. That's the whole point of, of doing those uh, doing those sessions. Just going to dive into some comments. Really interesting uh, comments coming through tonight. Lots of proactivity in the ads on this community. I can see Nat's getting a, uh, a new showreel scene done this week. Uh, Monica, good to see you. Uh, Sharon's finally made it back on a Monday. All right, so, uh, I, nearly called you, I nearly called you Sai. I was going to say Sharon and Die was the next comment down. All right, Sharon. And uh, and Di is saying she's finalising things on, on, on a show we'll see herself this week. Um, got an amazing location for free. Just booked. What's an HMUA? Di, I don't know what that is. An HMUA? Uh, and trying costumes tomorrow. It's a 1950s scene, so I want to do it right. Nice one. And good on you for getting an amazing location. If you put the hustle in, you'll be surprised what you can get lent to you for free whether it's buildings you know externals um did it was it your post i saw something about a train carriage is that yours 
I saw something the other day, dead quick, and it disappeared on Facebook. But I'm sure someone said that they uh, had, had managed to secure like a, a a train carriage or something like that for a bit for their showreel scene. So go for it. Good um, good on you. Sharon says, ignore my angry emojis. It tells the algorithm there's something controversial going on live. <laughs> Sharon, maybe there will be. You, you you might have put them in a bit early, but maybe in a minute there is going to be some controversial stuff going on live. Um, there is some stuff I want to talk about. It's not controversial, but um, people will have opinions on it, definitely. Maya finally plucked up the courage to put out a sketch on social media, on our Instagram, encouraged by the Bulletproof Actor course. Amazing. I, I'm, I'm so happy. You've done that, Maya, and I'm so happy to see everybody progressing through Bulletproof Actor. It's a program that I run with a, um, a top high-performance mindset coach, Matt Hall, once a year. We just closed the doors to it a couple of months ago, so we're taking the 2024 intake of students through the program now. Um, it's really for people who want to get on top of their mental game, really drill down into their mindset, and ultimately just cultivate a bulletproof confidence for this industry. It's all science-backed. Um, it really, really is game-changing for the actors that go through it. Um, so thank you, everybody who's on that. If you want to find out more about it, go to Bulletproof factor.com you can get on the waiting list for next year um but it is a game-changing course but good on you maya and you said that johnny weldon who's the king of putting stuff out on social media um you know actor turned superstar you know through putting stuff out on social media mr johnny weldon you said he liked your uh your sketch so good on you i hope that's gonna um encourage you to do more and inspire you to do more good evening nick and gary hope you are good um sharon got a castle and an airfield with a plane for free <laughs> And it, it, when she's doing her last film she says they are good locations if you can get a castle and an airfield and the plane Len, Sharon you should just go and just see what you can blag in life never mind just for a show real scene if you got that you could probably walk into anywhere and get some free stuff um, Indy speaking to a casting director face to face this week to talk shop see what happens good work mate So, and it was you uh, uh, Di who got the train carriage amazing good stuff Nick's been doing firearms training so much stuff's been going down in the community and Yvonne says Bulletproof Factor rocks yes Yvonne um, thank you for being uh, for being part of it so um, next thing is here's the stuff I want your opinion on now I'm, I'm not putting the, I'm not like you know putting this out to be controversial or anything like that I'm genuinely fascinated by where people are at in the industry when it comes to the way that they audition now, a super high-profile actress um, did an interview with a super high-profile actor uh, this week. It was Olivia Coleman and Andrew Scott. They did an interview together um, for a publication called Interview, I think. And then I noticed um, this morning, Twitter was going off a little bit. X, formerly Twitter, was going off a little bit. Let me share my browser again and go over here. Um, this article, IndieWire, now they're being a little bit inflammatory because this is the only thing they pulled out of this interview, so I will just sort of like preface with that. Um, the interview between Olivia and Andrew talks about lots of stuff, um, lots of stuff really that wasn't even to do with the industry. It was really just a you're amazing, oh no, you're more amazing chat, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> they're lovely people, but there wasn't that much depth to the interview, if I'm, if, if I'm honest with you. And they're both lovely people, I'm sure. I met Olivia on a, a, a show called Exile many, many years ago at the start of my career. She was nothing but lovely, um, incredibly humble and great and just really, really, really kind. So um, this is not like to call anybody out for their opinions. I'm just genuinely interested in what you guys think. So in this interview, Olivia said that asking actors to self-tape for their auditions is disrespectful and she followed it up as well with very rude and i was like wow like really did did you say that and i went and looked at the at the full interview and she does say it she doesn't go in on it and it's not like a big thing or anything like that but i just thought oh i don't agree with that at all so i put a tweet out before let's have a look where is it it's the first time i've ever really i never really get involved in any of this i don't put my opinions out anywhere generally i'm too busy but I thought, I've got an opinion on this because I don't want actors to read that as a headline and then suddenly jump on the bandwagon And because I think it's dangerous. I didn't want people to think, well, if Olivia Coleman's saying that self-tapes are disrespectful and rude, actors shouldn't be made to do them. I didn't want people who aren't in Olivia Coleman's position to start demonising casting directors and people who give them self-tapes because Olivia can afford to do that because she probably won't self-tape for that much. She'll get a lot of straight offers and she's very, very wealthy. <laughs> There'll be people at our level who aren't millionaires and aren't in all of the, the top stuff getting straight offers. Um, and I'm like, that. I think it would be very unhelpful for people 
working where we're working to adopt that mentality and go, right, well, that's it. I'm going to demonize casting directors and demonize anyone who gives me a self-take because Olivia Coleman says they're disrespectful and rude. So I'm going to have to do that because she's a proper actor and I want to be a proper actor. Um, I thought that's not helpful. So I will put something out just for, well, just in case anyone reads it and goes, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll change my mind then. So I just put this, this tweet out before I said, having, um, have to dis, um, have to respectfully disagree with Olivia on this. Um, it is with respect. I think she's a great actress. I just don't agree with her on this and that's okay. I put, how is it disrespectful or really rude for a casting director to offer an actor an opportunity to land a job often worth thousands or hundreds of thousands in Olivia's case? That's just the truth. Um, in their own time, from their own home. If you don't want the opportunity, just politely decline the tape. It's simple. Tapes are saving actors hundreds of pounds in train fees, uh, train fares, sorry, and opening up casting um, to disabled artists all over the country who may be unable to travel at short notice. The net positives far outweigh the negatives from the feedback I get from most actors. And I interact with literally thousands of actors a year. I'm not just making that up. Um, it's very, very much nine out of ten in favour for self tapes, uh, and I put there. And recalls are still uh, almost always in the room for the first round, and just for the first round. That's all I'm saying. Self tapes are highly efficient and give casting directors scope to take many more risks on unknown talent. Um, being in the room is great, but to call self tapes disrespectful and rude um, are the wrong adjectives here. I just think they're two describing words that I would never use. Um, to describe self tapes. So, let me refresh and I'll see if there's any comments and stuff coming through. And um, I just want your opinions on it. And and you could be and you can completely disagree with me. Honestly, it's absolutely fine. You can be like Ross, you're full of shit. I hate I hate self tapes. Um, I'd rather spend money traveling um because it's worth it for me. You know that is okay to have that opinion. Honestly, I don't think I'm right. As Rick Carr, we had a little conversation before. He said couldn't agree more. Time and money being saved is uh is so key. If you're taping three times a week and that changes to three trips to London a week, instead, there would be an outrage. Um, I put exactly, I booked five TV jobs from tapes last year. Nothing disrespectful and rude about it. And this is this is honestly what I, I do. I do feel sorry for casting directors at the moment. And just any organizations in the acting industry seem to be getting so much shit, if I'm, if I'm just being honest with you. Everyone wants to blame everybody at the moment there's something a bit weird in the air but I, I, I honestly feel casting directors just can't win these days the industry has developed a complaining culture which is awful to see and i do honestly believe it as not us because in the acting this community we don't complain because we're full of nice motivated inspired people who just get shit done but i think in the wider world um we have got a lot of complainers in the industry sharon says absolutely agree all right sharon it's good job you agree you're here on the live um it would be fine if you didn't, though. They save time, money, stress, and carbon footprint. Alex couldn't agree more. Uh, Gary says, the crucial thing is what you say, Ross, is that it gives unknown actors a great shot. Three seconds of self-tape can work wonders, and a casting director might even ask the actor to come in and take up 15 minutes of time. Mind you, I didn't have a casting director at all. Uh, and it worked out brilliantly for all. Okay, Gary. Write a director of Hapless, probably for the rest of my life. So he's doing it himself anyway. <laughs> Good on you, Gary. James says, cell tapes cost actors in equipment, time, and emotional stress and pressure on their reading partners, often non-actor friends and family. The idea that one can do hundreds of takes at home in order to nail it is not a good one. If anything, you're auditioning someone... Oh, big reply. You're auditioning someone 100th take ability... Uh, this is just that would be bad self tape form though to do 100 takes. I respect and love casting directors, but often we put tons of time and money into tapes and get no response at all. We actors now are expected to be mini studio shoot, edit, upload on a schedule. On top of that, there is gross cottage industry around self tapes, promising actors a way of bettering their self tapes. These are exploitative. I get self tapes, I get it. They are here to stay, but they can exist with a more respectful, empathetic concept. I still don't think that justifies that they're rude and disrespectful. Though that was that that was my point there, um, and I understand. You know, there is pressure. I, I empathise with James there. There is pressure for actors to learn, you know, how to turn the phone around on themselves and shoot a tape. And you might have to, you know, buy. You know, you probably have to invest about one hundred and fifty pounds. That's the kit list that I use and I give out to actors. If you go to actsonlist.tv forward slash self tape, you can get the kit list for free. It's about one hundred and fifty quid for the lights, microphone, and backdrop. Um, probably a little less than that now. Actually, stuff's gone down a bit. 
But as an investment in your career, if you book one job, literally one line on Coronation Street, 600 quid there, you're going to get four times your investment back. So it sounds like I, I, imp I empathize with James there in terms of, yeah, there's a learning curve enabled. Um, but I think a train ticket to London just to play devil's advocate from Manchester could be over 100 quid. And you've got nothing to show for that. It's at least the kit you buy for your self tape, like once you can use for a thousand self tapes. Uh, and if you're doing 100 takes, you, something's wrong there. Um, Miss Coleman thinks everyone gets cast on DNA checks. As you said, there's a complaining culture from elites in the industry. Every headline, every article, they mouth off about something. I didn't know there was this many comments, honestly. I think Zoom castings are the way to go. I rarely land anything through cell tapes, but Zoom has worked well for me. Sort of halfway between a cell tape and the real world, isn't it? Um, this is an agency here. We completely agree. So wonderful having amazing clients throughout the UK. There's quite a lot of comments going down there. I didn't realize. Um, and there's more. Bloody hell. I had no idea. Uh, Dave, who's Dave? 100% bang on the money. How many cell tapes do you do in your own home where you never hear back from? Imagine the cost and the time to do the same thing in person at the other end of the country and still not hear back from. It's okay if you're already loaded, but some of us work, work to eat. Yeah, so it looks like... Oh, God, there's more. I won't go through all of these. I had no idea that um, that this has taken off a little bit tonight. <laughs> tonight. It'd mean the world if you if you went over to X and left a comment just so i can add up all the pros all the people for and, and 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 against i like like quantitative feedback um and like i say it's completely fine if you if you absolutely disagree with me please write on that tweet that you disagree with me I, I, it's absolutely okay to do that um i don't mind that at all i just want to I, I genuinely did that to just hear what other people uh what the people think um that's got quite a bit of bit of traction that hasn't it um, right, let me come back on camera and just I'll, I'll read the comments and just see uh, see if you're still if you're still here. Gary says I've gone viral. I've gone viral, Gary. Bloody hell, mate. Um, it's funny that, isn't it? It's um, it is interesting. Yeah, sort of. It's a. It's, I think it's polarizing. That, that's sort of like a, a bit of a thing on social media, isn't it? If you put something out where people will generally be on one side of the fence or the other, you will get traction. That's why any content. So Maya, you know, you're saying you're putting out your comedy stuff. Um, before on social media anytime we create clips from our our interviews and things there's always got to be something not aggressively polarizing in terms of it's going to cause conflict but that it's got to emote something from people you've got to make your audience feel something so they they feel compelled to either comment on it or share it and some ways you can do that is you can put you can put content out that really makes somebody laugh Maya like your comedy sketch and they will feel really good about sharing that to their friends because they almost feel like, oh, look what I can bring to you and make you laugh. It's almost like they want to take, in a nice way, credit for your work, Maya. We all love finding something on social, don't we, that we go, oh, that's going to make somebody smile and thus it's going to put me in a good light. So I'm going to share that. Equally, if it's going to make someone angry or upset, I'm going to share it um, because they'll probably like, you know, I disagree with this and I know you over there, Sharon, you disagree with this. So I'm going to send it you and then you can back me up to tell me that I'm right for disagreeing with it or whatever. If you make people feel anything on social media, that's how you get traction. And that still applies to your acting work. You know, if you, you can't put something out that's vanilla and just middle of the road, like, oh, okay, ni nice. That, what do you think of the performance? Yeah, it's nice. Nice. Um, it's got to be. It's got to make people feel something. It could be anger. Could could make somebody cry. Could make somebody laugh hysterically. But it's got to make them feel something. Um, so let's dive into the comments and see. Um, let's have a look and see what people uh, and people are saying. Uh, there's a lot of comments here as here as well. Um, I think this is good though, isn't it? It's a good discussion because cell takes have been around long enough now for us all to have got over the novelty of them. And you know what? The actors who like really like are serious again this is this is not to call anybody out but we've had enough time now we've had enough time to get used to these and you know we've had three years or almost maybe slightly more um to to even put a fiver a week away to buy that backdrop to buy those lights to get a microphone like there's not really an excuse to have not invested a little bit now in a self-taste because they're not going anywhere 
Um, no matter you know how many elites will say that they're um, you know they're disrespectful and rude, um, I don't see they're going anywhere. I think that I think there's such a good way for casting directors to take chances on people. I know I've been seen by casting directors in the south, uh, particularly in London, because I'm in Manchester here. Um, high profile casting directors who wouldn't have seen me necessarily in person, because one they some people just are like, I'm not going to make you travel down for this. It's such a small part. You've only got like five lines. Don't come all the way for that. You know, it's easy to just put put me on tape. Um, but also just because, um, you know, sometimes it's just easier to just get local talent, isn't it? Local hire. So they can go, actually, you know what? I know this for a fact. A really good casting director messaged me actually and said, listen, they want, um, they're looking for local hire on this job. But I presume if you get it, you know, like you'll be able to stay with somebody or you'll make it work. And if you can, I'll give you the tape for it. Um, you know, there's opportunities that I just wouldn't have got had, you know, it just, just been solely in the room because maybe, you know, they've got time to bring five people in for this role. But if they, you know, in person, but if they do it on tape, they can bring it, they can get 10 tapes and they might just throw a couple of wild cards in there that, you know, just out, thinking outside the box a little bit that they can show the director. I just think it's within our interest to embrace tapes. And when you really you know, do them often enough and you practice and don't wait until you get a real tape to practice, you know, get some scripts from the BBC writers room, start practicing in your own time. You know, when you can throw that, that backdrop up, put your lights up, camera up, you know, and shoot a tape within 30 minutes. Um, it's all right. It doesn't require that much work. The biggest pain in the ass for me is moving my kitchen table. The rest of the setup's really actually quite quick. Me and Petra have got it down to a fine art now. Anyone here who's struggling for cell tape partners as well, there was that comment where someone was saying it puts loads of stress on cell tape partners. You need to address that. Whoever left that comment, I, I, I would suggest to them or anyone who's in the same boat, like you need to look for solutions here, not keep banging on about the problems. And the solution would be to buddy up with an actor friend of yours who hopefully you've got in your life and you do self-tapes for each other. I'll always read in for Petch. Petch will always read in for me. If one of us isn't available, Olivia Stockdale's a legend, one of the members of Acts on This.TV. She's set up a WhatsApp group with nearly 100 actors from our community in it now. You drop a message into that WhatsApp group, hey, I'm looking for a reader at 4 p.m. today and you will find one every single day of the week. Um, there are always solutions if you look for them or we can just throw our toys out the pram and complain and cry about how we wish it was. Um, I bought five jobs last year off self tapes. That's ten, literally. It's probably twenty five. What would it be? No, probably about twenty grand or something like that. Because they were they were quite good jobs. You know, off five tapes. You know, and you're looking at um, not after tax and commission, by the way. They weren't that big, but um, but they were pretty good. Most of the jobs were sort of I don't know three and a half to four and a half thousand quid, um, and. They were all off tapes and my self tape kit, as I say, is probably 150 quid. And I just had to learn how to um set it up and you know and how to edit. But me and Petra are gonna um are gonna bring out this course. It's called Great Looking Self Tapes. We're gonna put together a mini course, it'll be very inexpensive. Just to sort of teach everybody how to make their self tapes look great. It's called Great Looking Self Tapes for a uh, for a reason. Um but let's have a look uh at what people are saying here. Die is crushing it. Said I've had six self tapes in a couple of weeks in March. <laughs> Bloody hell die. And a recall in London two weeks ago. The train, wow! So the train was 180 quid for the uh, for the recall in London that Di got. I didn't get the job. She said if I had to do that for every first round audition, I couldn't afford to audition. You couldn't be an actor in that case. You just can't. Like you know. And what I've noticed on this as well, I don't think I've seen any casting directors throw their opinion out there. And that's because I just think they're scared because it's a high profile actor who said it. They don't want to go against that. Um, and I think they feel that if they say anything, they'll be demonized anyway. Casting are getting so much shit thrown at them. Like, bad, bad. Like, quite visceral stuff. I've heard from casting directors who, who I think are lovely people who have got had emails from people last week about the casting around a couple of shows that they've done. Um, really laying into them. Like, a lot of actors are just looking to, the, you know blame people and a lot of actors are angry they want to blame spotlight for stuff they want to blame equity for stuff they want to kick off kick off on everything you know i don't i feel like people are stuck between a rock and our place and that cast directors can't win at the moment so they just don't say anything because it's easier otherwise they'll just upset people and then they'll just get a load of shit on on x from actors going this isn't good enough and blah 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 what do you want them to do you want them to give you auditions be happy have be happy you've got a tape it's an opportunity 
And if you don't want to do it because you can't, because you've not got enough time, that's fine. I've had to turn takes down this year, you know, for stuff or, or projects that I'm like, mm, it's not quite exactly what I want to do. And that's okay. You don't have to do everything. It's okay to say no from time to time. But 180 quid train fare die, I couldn't afford that if I if I was doing, you know, I don't know, even a handful of auditions a month. That's like my mortgage is only five hundred quid. <laughs> so uh so yeah, that's a yeah, that's a lot of money. Um Sarah says she totally agrees. Interesting, Sarah, thanks for that. Um Indra agrees. Sharon says the thing I said that is wrong with requests and just auditions in general is often very short time scales they're sent out on. Yeah, I've noticed that with commercial castings. I had to do one last week and it was um again for a lovely casting director though, I'm sure it wasn't his fault. Really like this casting director, but the turnaround was less than twenty four hours. Now the guidelines from the CDG, and I've 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 not had a request uh in the last probably year where I've not had two or three days, I think three days or most of them to do the tape. Uh, when it's been for for drama, like high end TV drama, we're getting a lot of notice on that now. So I think I think lower budget stuff, Sharon, or commercials, I find sometimes can be, um, you know, a, a bit haphazard. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, that's something that could could probably be addressed. But in that case, like I say, it's fine. It's just you know, if you can't do it in twenty four hours, you have to just let that one go, don't you? And just go. Look, I would love to do it, but I can't in uh, in this time frame. Uh, Nick says, I'd say you're right, Ross. In person is great, but if we only had that, fewer actors would get the chance to audition. I agree with you, Nick. I think that's right. Uh, Josh says, Defo, have to agree with you there, Ross. Both my TV jobs have come from self takes. Yeah, Josh, you've done some great work as well. Uh, but also, I've made lots of connections with writers, directors, casting directors via self takes because I followed up with emails later on uh, that week. My doors are way more open due to self tapes. Works around my job and family life, much prefer them. Um, let's have a look. Monica's saying it's the eclipse energy that's making everybody go crazy. Yeah, there's been a solar eclipse today, hasn't there? Has that happened? I'm not. I'm not well up on it, Monica. I know people were talking about it before, though. Um, Kate says cost of admin and time on both sides is affected. The self tape should help you get uh, to the room. Yeah, exactly. Because most recalls are are in the room still. It's only like the first round that I'm talking about here. Um, and like I say, I'm not saying self tapes are perfect. My point in that tweet was that. Um, to to say they're disrespectful and rude is wrong. That's it. I'm not saying they're perfect at all. Like you know, it's, it's lovely to get in the room and get feedback and bounce off people. And it's nice when you get a room. I I, I got in the room with Robert Stern last year for the Responder, um, and there was Barrington there, top bloke. He's a producer. Um, there was the director was there. Um, you know, there was multiple people in the room, and it's lovely when you get to bounce off everybody and everybody can pitch in with some ideas. Um, and you come away having met you know, multiple people, that's really worthwhile, the travel. I only had to go to Liverpool for that, but I'd have gone to London for that. Um, that's, you know, that's great. But equally, I would have been happy to tape for it. I did tape for the Responder another twice. <laughs> I didn't get any of the parts. I thought I did a bloody good job. I didn't get a single part. I auditioned for three. They were trying so hard, I think, to just throw me a bone and get me in there somehow, but... Just it wasn't meant to be, but hopefully there'll be a third series and I'll get in next time. Uh, Kanke says, self-tapes have helped me uh, as a working parent. Yeah, I tape during unsociable hours in most cases and still go to work and pay the rent. Nice one, Kanke. Um, Alex says, as much as I do prefer self-tapes for the first round, there still needs to be more rules adhered to with them, not asking actors to tape five different scenes with different settings. Yes, and basically getting actors to tape the actual job. <laughs> I once did a cell tape for a commercial once. It was for a Barclay card and it was for a vlogger. Um, and I used to vlog. I, me and Petch used to do a vlog a few years ago. And we decided we would actually make the advert for them because we thought, well, we vlog anyway and they're going to have to film it on a vlogging camera because if they want it to look like a vlog. You can't do it on a on a big TV camera. Um, so we shot the whole advert for them and I put in all the graphics and everything and I took it to the audition and I said, listen, this is gonna, please don't think I'm an arrogant prick. But rather than me just give you a half like arse shot at this in the audition room, showing you like, you know, pretending to be a vlogger, like I am and we do vlog every single week. Like three of the three out of the five days of the of the, of the working week we vlogged for two years. So we were good at it. Um and I just said I've I've recorded the advert. <laughs> um I'm just gonna play it to you on my laptop. And they penciled me on the spot for the gig. And then they didn't give it me. I'm like, I think they just thought, no, he's he's just he's just He's too good, isn't he? He's just done the advert for us. He might as well just give that to the end client and they'll pay him. So um, so they got rid of me. So uh, never heard from them again. But, <laughs> but, but sometimes you just got to make the advert. But yeah, it's definitely not something that should be uh, re re required, Alex. Definitely. 
Um, what about inviting Olivia to be on it? Joe, I would love Olivia Coleman to be an, uh, a member on that song. Not a member. <laughs> she wouldn't need to be a member. <laughs> she could be a member. I'd love her to be a guest, though. Uh, definitely. Like I say, when, when I, I saw her on Exile, honestly, lovely person. I'm not. There's nothing personal against her. This is just a difference of opinion on uh, on one tiny little aspect of, of the industry. Um, but yeah, if we could get Olivia on as a guest, I'd, I'd bloody love that. Um, I'm sure she's got some incredible stories to share. Um, someone said on another post that the train fare for them last minute was almost 300 quid, but only 42 pound if they could book two or three weeks before. And yeah, I've noticed that the difference is absolutely ludicrous since, um, Avanti have taken over the Manchester to London line. Uh, when it was Virgin, it used to be really cheap show and I could get tickets like quite last minute. Um, sometimes in first class as well for like 40 quid. Um, if they had spare seats on the day, now you really are looking sometimes in the hundreds, you know, for for a single ticket. Um, so yeah, that is uh, it is very very expensive. Um, Kate says if you have the luxury of Olivia's wage, then fair enough, but that's not the majority. Um, and Di says the CDG says two days, uh, I think, but that seems to mean they come in on a Friday evening to be on the Monday, which is a bit unfair. It's supposed to be not including of weekend days that day, you know. I remember when they first put those uh, guidelines out and it was supposed to be, yeah, two days notice not including weekends. So they didn't expect you to just give up your your whole weekend um, on that, definitely. And if Indy was a casting director, he'd hire everybody. Nice one, Indy. I'd hire us all as well, definitely. Um, and Alex says, I thought Avanti was going to be an improvement on Virgin. Boy, was I wrong? No, they're rubbish, aren't they? I'm sorry, Avanti. One of our members, Sarah, works for Avanti. It's not her fault. She's amazing. But, oh, God. Oh, I've not had great experiences with Avanti trains, to be honest with you. Hopefully, they're getting better. But, yeah, it's um, it's not it's not all been plain sailing. Um, but that's what's good, good about doing tapes. You don't have to use a train um, all that often. Um so that was just something that I just wanted to put out, yeah, just to see what people what people think. But do go in and leave a comment on that um, on that post on X. I'd love to be able to tally it all up at the end of the week and just see what um, you know what the the overall sort of status quo is. Um, let's have a look. Someone called Eliza here says I definitely booked more jobs from in the room auditions. She's with Olivia on that. That's totally fine, Eliza. But you can get better at tapes as well. Get better at tapes. You'll still, you know, I've seen people change their lives with one self tape. Sometimes, you know, especially when back when we were all stuck indoors, they were casting everything off tapes, like the lead, lead, lead roles were done off tapes. Like people's entire lives and career tra- trajectories changed, um, you know, via a tape. So, um, so yeah, you know, it, they can be really, really effective. I'm not saying they're perfect because they're certainly not. Um, but I think they can, they can work if you know if you embrace them and just um, with an open mind realize what a lot of actors don't. And I say this I say this quote quite a lot, but I don't think people realize that as human beings by default we're designed to get better through effort. We're literally baked into our DNA. We are designed to get better through effort. So if technology is not your thing, I wasn't born with an iPad in my hand. You know, I'm 41. I, I wasn't born. I didn't have the internet till I was about 20 or something like that. Uh, I didn't have a mobile phone until I was 18. Um, I wasn't brought up with technology, but I've just decided that I wanted to learn it. I'm a human being designed to get better through effort, so I'm going to learn technology. And now I can, you know, shoot a really effective self-tape. When I got a job in Corrie, I had, I had Kevin Boyle, a great director from Coronation Street, on act on this as a guest a few weeks ago. Uh, he directed me in an episode of Coronation Street, and we played my self-tape out as, you know, as an example on that, on that chat. I wanted to reverse engineer why Kevin gave me the job. And the first thing came out of his mouth... Uh, that night was the first thing that struck me was how technically how 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 good it looked in terms of how well lit it was um you know sort of like j- just how it stood out from the other tapes just from being technically sound there was no no distractions um it looked great so we could focus entirely on the performance um and like i say it's it's less than 150 quid worth of kit you know you don't need lots this, this phone everyone here has probably you know got an iphone or something similar the cameras on that are way 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 more than good enough um you know the camera on this phone is is better than the the camera that I spent over a grand on at drama school to shoot a uh, a comedy like dissertation on. Uh, I spent about twelve hundred quid on that, and it was a mini DV camera 
where you had to record, obviously you'll record all your stuff in camera. I don't know if anyone remembers these, but if you wanted to put that video onto your computer to edit it, you had to basically import it into your computer in real time. So if you'd shot two hours of footage, it would take two hours for it to get on your computer. You would play it and effectively your computer would, rec would record it. It was that old school. Um, now, I mean, God, people don't know they're born. Anyone's complaining now about self-tapes when they're under, you know, under 30. You don't know how we lived back in the day. Um, someone else here, Alice, says um, there are benefits of self-taping, but there are drawbacks too. There should be a choice. Yeah, I agree with that. Where possible, um, every casting director I've interviewed in the last 12 months for acts on this has said where possible they will give a choice. Peter Hunt from Hollyoaks was the first one I heard say it. Um early when would that have been like january 2023 was when i first started hearing casting right to say this so well over a year ago now saying that they would give people the option to tape or come in it was up to them so there are more casting rights doing that as well um definitely um stephanie says i get it that it's better to try and nail it in person with the spontaneity of doing it in a tight space of the audition time uh yeah because you only get a few you'd only get a few goes in the audition room definitely uh, and Alice says, I was in despair in lockdown when I got a, uh, an attachment from a casting director among several directives on self-taping, which was no distracting noises such as pets or children. I had a two-month-old baby and just felt it was it's so insensitive. In lockdown, Alice, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but again, for people with kids, you know, you've got to see the other side of it as well, haven't you? Like, you know, it, it might not be possible to go to an in-person casting with children with no childcare and yet if you do a tape if if you can get half an hour in when the child's asleep or someone else is looking after it um you know even at home that that's that's still you know still got to be better than just having to say no i can't go to the audition at all so it's interesting isn't it it sort of seems quite weighted maybe sort of 80 20 8 out of 10 are like yeah I'm up for the tapes. Twenty are like, oh, I'd prefer sort of in the room stuff. But let's see what um, let's see what happens by the end of the uh, end of the week. Um, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> who's talking about the five hour mega bus? Five, <laughs> five hour mega bus from Manchester to London. I'm not doing that. God, any time I ever get on a bus, honestly, and I mean this with love, but. <sighs> don't know how to say it these days without offending but like whoever's the craziest person on the bus let's say will sit next to me the one who gets on the bus talking to themselves with no shoes on will generally come and sit next to me because <laughs> i must have i must like have a kind face or something honestly I, I was going to chalton once in manchester and a guy got on the bus and we were going past there's this massive uh cemetery in chalton i can't remember the name of it it's pretty famous though but it's huge and this guy got on the bus with no shoes on and he sat down, he sat next to me and he just, as we were going past the cemetery, he went, see that there? I said, yep. He said, you know death? I said, yep. He goes, it's not real. I went, oh, okay. He said, you die and then straight away you're back alive. <laughs> it's like, right. I mean, I've, I've, that's lovely. I mean, you know, I would like to think you do rise and, and go somewhere else, but I was just like, interesting isn't it but they they sit next to me i must have have that look on my face it's like come and come and get it off your chest give give me all your all of your thoughts um so yeah five hour mega bus i definitely end up sitting next to somebody like that for five hours could be an interesting comedy sketch though um Dice says, I did a comedy gig in Manchester and got a really late coach back to Brum. The driver announced, on this coach, toilets are located at the rear. My instant reaction was, that's where I usually locate my toilet. <laughs> okay, Dice, there you go. Um, right, what else have we got? We've still got loads to talk about. Southern Cemetery, Alex. Yes, that's that's what it's called. Southern Cemetery. Yeah, yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Sharon says she's a weirdo magnet as well. I mean, they're lovely people. I've never had any trouble. They're very, you know, nice kind people but they just they just you know say a few strange things um but there we go right what else have i got to uh have i got to cover with you guys um oh for members of acts on this tv look i'll tease you again the app is gonna release this week it's almost ready look i was just before i'm designing the, the very last bits to put on the app store so you know when you go and download your app um you see the little like previews of what you can do on the app and stuff like that i'm just in the middle of, of doing this i'm almost finished now so um to to give people a, um 
a bit of an update. Yeah, normally if you're a member of AtsOnThis.tv, if you don't want to access uh, the website and all of your live calls through that, you know, like the the recordings of the live calls through a web browser on your phone, um, at the moment you could use an app by a company that I hooked up with called Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I. But um, when we introduced the brand new community hub on AtsOnThis, which is pretty state of the art, we can go live in there hold sort of in-person meetups in there, um, well, in-person virtual meetups in there, challenges, there's like forums in there. It's really, really cool. The, the new community hub is great. If you're a member of Ats on this, check it out. You get 24-7 support on anything you need in your acting career. When we launched that, it required a second app. So you had one app for, for content, one app for community. And I'm like, no, I need to change this. So um, I need you to use this because just to be honest with you, it's cost a bloody fortune. Uh, but I've rolled both of those Kajabi apps into one single app. It will be an act on this app. You will go to the app store and download the act on this app. It will look like this. Um, and we're mere days away now from launching it. It'll be free for all acts on this members. Obviously, you know, it's part of your subscription. It will be available on iPhone and Android as well. I think iPhone will go up first, but it'll literally be a matter of hours or days before it's it's released on Android. I'm not neglecting anybody on Android, but you would be so surprised the intricacies of getting these apps approved through the App Store on both platforms. It really is like you've got to jump through a million hoops to to have Apple and Google, you know, approve these things. Um, so that's really the final part. What you're seeing there. Um, you know, in terms of the design of those graphics there. So that's happening this week. That's super exciting. Um, I'm going to go over to Acts on this as well, just to show you what's going down this week for members as well. We've got so many great calls coming up, folks. Honestly, this summer is going to be absolutely banging. Uh, I've just gone over to the live schedule. You can find this at actsonthis.tv forward slash live tomorrow night. This has come around quick again, hasn't it? Um, it's our quarterly Act on This Answers session. So this is a session that I host with producer Petch. Um, these are the most in-depth Q&A sessions that we do where it's just Q&A. Um, anything that you need help with in your acting career, and I mean anything, you know, uh, we've been doing this combined for nearly 25 years you know i graduated drama school in 2005 been a professional actor ever since it's nearly 20 years ago petch has been doing it for at least 10 years i think maybe longer um i don't think there's any question really i just can't give you some advice on and some help with anything at all whether it's on you know signing with a new agent you know your show reel landing more auditions, side hustles, maybe you want to create your own business to get out of your day job so you can focus more on your acting career. Um, anything at all that I can help you with, um, tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m., me and Petch will be live for two hours um, answering as many questions as we possibly can. So that's going down tomorrow. Week after that, this is I, I love these sessions. If you want to basically be richer this year, be on this session. So I'm bringing my own accountant, in my opinion, the best accountant in the acting industry, specifically for actors. He looks after top named actors, production companies, um, huge clients, um, really, really big clients. Um, I'm bringing my uh, accountant, Glyn Jelly from Summit Chartered Accountants on on Tuesday, the 23rd of April for a session. Now we're in the brand new 2024, 2025 tax year. Um, really getting on top of your finances as an actor. And anyone who's here, if you're not registered as a self-employed actor, join us for that session. I don't care if you're earning money out of your acting career or not yet. If you're not earning money, it's even better. If you're losing money in your career, it's even better that you register as self-employed now because you can save hundreds, if not thousands of pounds in tax down the line when you offset your current losses. So um, that's going to be uh, the week after. That's Tuesday the 23rd. Then it's our quarterly showreel surgery session with Chris Stone where we play out five members' showreels, dive really deep into what is popping in the showreel scene right now. Um, we also walk you through an eight-step formula for showreel success that will just make your showreel so much more effective than 90% of showreels out there. It will really put you in the top, well, 1%. It's better than 99% of show actor showreels out there, to be honest. Um, and we'll be playing five members' showreels from Acts on this. So I will send out an email to all members um, asking for your reels, basically. And we choose five at random. Um, if yours doesn't get chosen, you'll still learn a shed ton. If it does get chosen, you'll learn even more. Um, you'll have a banging reel by the end of it. So uh, so that's happening. Um, then other sessions that we've got coming up. I've got a podcast coming out um, 
one with, I hope, Danny Brockhurst, in my opinion, one of the best writers in the country, responsible for so many massive dramas. Um, he always teams up with Harlan Coben, so things like um, Fool Me Once, one of the biggest Netflix shows to drop recently. Sky One's Brassic, Danny wrote with, uh, Joe, or writes with Joe Gilgan. Um, I've got a podcast coming out with Danny. Um, he's going to come around soon, um, maybe even this week, to sort that out. Um, a great director, I'm not going to spoil the surprise on there, uh, who's actually the director of Harlan Coben's... Um, drama that's in production right now called Missing You will be coming around for a podcast as well pretty soon um, other live Zoom calls that I've just booked in uh, we've got David Crowley who is Hollyoaks uh, on-set acting coach and Hollyoaks director coming back Guy Howe from WGM Atlantic a great agent uh, Victor Jenkins, one of the best casting directors in the entire industry, full stop, um, is coming back uh, to do a session with us. There's just so many um, great names that are either coming back or coming out, coming out on this for the first time um, that are going to be coming up over the next few weeks. Um, and it's, it's going to be great. So get involved in that. Acts on this.tv forward slash live if you want to keep an eye on the guests that are coming up. All part of your subscription. One membership, basically. One fee gets you access to literally everything, including that app. Um, oh, and also um, the Ultimate Contacts database. For anyone who's an annual member, you get access to our Ultimate Contacts database. Um, the most in-depth database of casting director, casting assistant, casting associate, and agent contact details in the whole of the world in the UK industry anyway. Uh, no one has more contact info than we do. It's taken us, we're getting on for 250 hours to collate this. We're waiting on two more emails from casting offices um, and we're going to put out the biggest update that we've done in probably 18 months. Um, so hopefully by the end of this week, there will be an update on the Ultimate Contacts database as well. So I will send the notification out to everyone who's got access to it once that update drops. And if you're currently a monthly subscriber to Acts on This, you might be paying 27 quid a month for your membership. If you want to save 45 quid a year and get that Ultimate Contacts database for free, we don't sell it. You can never buy it. I will never sell it to anybody separately. Um, then upgrade to an annual membership. You'll save 45 quid and get the database for free. It's a complete no-brainer. Um, but yeah, we will never sell that. We get a lot of pe people asking us if we can sell it. And um, I'm like, no. We get people sometimes going, can, can I pay for my annual membership monthly? <laughs> no, because with respect, <laughs> that's then a monthly membership. The whole point is to reward people who commit to the community for a year. So, um, so yeah, not only do you save money by committing to a year, you get the database for free, so I can't make it make it fairer than that. Um, right, let me dive back into uh, into some comments here on Facebook, um, and then what else have I got? Is that the time? What time's that? Shit, it's five two. Every week this happens. It goes so fast. Um, right, let's have a look. Glenn does Monica's accounts. Yes, Monica. Glenn's amazing. Glenn's so good. He's, he looks after so many people. He's one of the only people I can text and know I'll get a reply back within 30 minutes. And I'm like, I don't know how he does it. He looks after so many people. Glenn does Josh's taxes as well. <laughs> Sending in my finances for the last tax year. For the first time, my earnings outweigh my expenses, says Josh. Yes. Huge win and massive progress. Mate, that's amazing. That's such a, that is such a pivotal milestone in anybody's career when ultimately you're turning your own business because that's what you are as an actor. You have, you've done something there there's so few people do. I don't just mean actors. I mean, you, a, a business. To turn a business profitable is very, very difficult. Nine out of 10 businesses in the wider world fail. You've got roughly like one in 10 businesses will be around five years after it started. That's the stats. Nine out of 10 will close down within five years. Um, so fair play, man. And anybody who's not profitable yet, keep going. The beauty about the acting industry you know, you're not like a shop on the high street with massive, massive overheads all the time that would have to close down within five years. The only thing that's making you close down um, and just quit completely is just, you know, you basically, your decision to just leave the industry. You know, I know for financial reasons, people can take a step back for a bit, save up a bit of money because their acting career might not be earning them as much as they would like and they've got to go and do other stuff. And that's fine. That's not really quitting. Even having a couple of years out to, you know, to, to focus on different part of the industry. So like, that's not quitting. Um, but yeah, a lot of businesses where you would set up a shop on the high street or an online store, nine out of 10 of those aren't around after five years. So, um, round of applause, Josh, you know, you're profitable, mate. Let's, let's make you more profitable, um, this year. And for anybody else, like I say, if you're not profitable, just hang in there, stay in the game. Act on this wasn't profitable for eight years. It owed me 64,000 pounds before 
it, it began having enough actors paying their memberships to start paying me any of that money back. Um, now, 14 years in, so another, what's that, six years later, now it's profitable. Um, I think I was a bit mad. Like On paper, I should have probably closed that on this down <laughs> a long time ago, but now I don't have to. Now it's profitable. It pays me a wage. It pays Pet a wage. Um, and it means that I can afford my mortgage, you know, so uh, so it's great. I'm not a millionaire, but it beats working for a living. It, it, I work longer hours now, ironically, um, than I did when I had a nine to five. It's interesting, isn't it? Sometimes you set up a business to sort of get away from the nine to five and to get away from your boss. I'll be my own boss. And then what ends up happening is you swap the nine to five for the 24 seven. And rather than have one boss... I end up with over a thousand bosses because you're all members of Acts on This and I feel in a way I work for you. Like, that's just only right, isn't it? You know, everybody pays their subscription. Um, so I end up, you know, having a thousand people <laughs> to answer to rather than one boss. I feel Petch is my boss. Like, you know, in a way I've, I work for him because like, it can't really be another way. Yes, he works with me in, in you know, in the company, but like for him to give a shit and care about the business to any degree that I care about it, you've really got to, you know, do your best for people. Um, you know, so you do end up, yeah, you end up with, with loads of bosses basically, but it's all right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap it. I'm not going back to work in a shop again. Did that for 11 years. I just lost, lost all faith in humanity doing, uh, doing that. Um, right. Alex wants me to get Nina gold on. Alex, I've tried. <laughs> I, one day, you know what? Like, I think to get Nina on, I'm going to end up having to book a job and get to like meet her in real life and really, really work hard. Nina does roughly like one, really sort of like one media piece a year, generally like a double time spread in the Times or something like that, talking about one of the massive shows that she's cast. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'll do my best. We've had Kate Bone on, who was uh, Nina's assistant. I think Robert Stern might end up doing a podcast with me. I don't think he, he likes to do stuff on camera, but he worked with Nina and probably still does. I'm not sure if he still does actually, but for a long time. But um, but yeah, since Nina Gold did um, Game of Thrones, it's been very difficult, very difficult to get access. But got to keep trying, aren't you? You know, you've just got to keep trying. Sharon says he's Ross our bitch then. Yeah, pretty much, Sharon. <laughs> pretty much. And basically a lot of people's beckoning calls I am answering emails most nights, giving actors advice at half past eleven. Sometimes in bed, um, I'm up. I'm on my computer. Sometimes I don't know as early as I go to the gym in the morning. So so I don't often start work. Petch will start earlier than me a little bit. He sometimes starts at eight, but he'll finish at five. I'll sometimes start roughly around ten, but I'll finish at uh, midnight. So uh, so yeah, I'm I'm everybody's bitch basically, Sharon. But it's fine. I'm fine with that. It's uh, it's all right, um, and Alex says he's making me redundant. Don't sack me, Alex. <laughs> don't. I've got to don't. I need to keep this job. Um, definitely. Gary says I love writing too much to see it as work. Got to tour. Get to tour my film installation this year thanks to Arts Council grant. Nice one, Gary. Yeah, you know if you can, if you can make money from your career that you enjoy, it's it's taking a pay cut. But being happier is definitely, if you can afford it, I don't mean take a pay cut to then suddenly not be able to afford your mortgage and your car payments and just, you know, all that stuff. But I know a lot of people who are in, I genuinely know a lot of people, I'm talking friends outside of the acting industry actually, who are in jobs where they've they've decided to stay in a job that they really, I mean like really makes them miserable, really do not like, don't like the people they work with, don't like their boss, um, but they're doing it for the extra eight grand that they get in that job so that they can go on that luxury holiday once a year or have that car um, so they can afford to pay it. When, when ironically, the car now owns them because they've got to stay in that shit job they hate in order to pay for the car because they've not bought it outright. But a lot of people who have swapped their happiness um, for a luxury item as opposed to going, well, hang on a minute, if I just did something that might not pay quite as much but I enjoyed it more... Overall, that's a net win. That's a positive and you know, net positive because I'm getting up in the morning way more enthusiastic about life and every part of your life affects every part of your life. So it bleeds into all areas of your of your life. You know, if your work life isn't good, I imagine it bleeds into your home life and your kids' life and 
everything. So, um, so yeah, I would rather not earn as much running my own business, um, but actually be, you know, happier than go, right, you know, I know I could go with the skills that I've got in, in website building and marketing and creating communities. I could definitely go and work for, a I don't know, a social media marketing company or something. I could definitely get paid good money. Like, I could, I could probably get paid 100 grand a year for doing that. But I don't want to work for somebody else. I'd rather just just be happier. <laughs> like, I'd rather just stand there in front of the computer just talking to you lot. Definitely. It's just, honestly, I think it's, it's really interesting what people will sacrifice. It's almost sort of like how much would I have to pay you to sell your soul? Like how much, how much, how, not even selling your soul. Salaries are really interesting. How much does a company have to give you for you to sacrifice your dreams? That's just a really interesting thing to sort of ponder on because I've seen it. I've seen people literally be bought out. I really want to be a painter. I really want to set up a, a doggy daycare oh, I'm going to make this company over here is going to give me 35 grand a year. Oh, well, I'll just give up on on, on that thing that would make me happy then just for the, for the money. And then they just die having never lived. Let's not do that, folks. Let's not do that. Die says, I swapped over 50 grand a year for a life as a, <laughs> as a poor actor. Much poorer, but much happier. Yes, Die. <laughs> All the poor actors... Throw your hands up at me. No, you don't have to be a poor. You don't have to be a poor actor. Like you, you were wealthy in many other ways. We're richer in lots of ways. Wealth is not just finances. Um, obviously, you've got to be able to, you know, pay pay your essentials and stuff. There's, there's money can definitely buy happiness when it comes to that. I don't agree with the money can't buy you happiness. It can, hundred percent to a level, and then after that, it won't buy you anymore. You know, you won't get exponential happiness in that jump from 40k a year to 150k a year you know uh, once you can pay pay your way i think then it does become about living your life i know i definitely i work too much 100 percent. i sort of i love it but i know i definitely have almost enslaved myself at times um and there comes a point where i'm like i know i need to sort of live a little bit more keep trying it's been the it's that that's like a theme in my life that i struggle with a lot control is a theme that I struggle to let go of and, and delegate. Petch will tell you about that. Um, and um, and just sort of like, yeah, uh, having just, just living a bit and having experiences. I spend a lot of time doing this, building this online, this online empire. I definitely need to get out a bit more. Now that now the the nights are, are lighter, um, I'm gonna make a commitment to uh, to do that. Um, right, Josh, is anyone who says money can't buy them happiness, you can transfer it into my account and I'll, <laughs> I'll leave a bank details. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's what when, Josh, when people say, oh, winning the lottery, I wouldn't like all that. 12 million, 50 million, oh, I couldn't do that. Well, if you don't like it, just give it away. Just, t- just take half of it. I'm like, give it me all. I'll win the Euro millions. Give me that 300 million or whatever it is. And if I then find out I don't like it, I can slowly give it to you lot. I could go, die, here's a million quid. Sharon, have a million pound. Have a, have a nice time. Here are, Josh. Have a million pounds. You know? Be all right, won't it? I'm not leaving Sarah and Andrew out and Alex. You can all have a million pounds as well. Joe, you can have a million pounds. Uh, who else might be on here? There's a lot of people here. Nat, you can have a million pounds. Samantha, you can have a million pounds. Anyone on here, if I won 300 million pounds and I decided I didn't like it, I'd give you... The that's the caveat, Alex. No, not just <laughs> not just in general. If I didn't like it, then I'd give you a million pounds. Uh, Andra, you can have a million, definitely. No, uh, no, no, no problem at all. Uh, love it. Right, um, I've got to love you and leave you guys. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and just hanging out. Really do appreciate it. If you are if you're new or you're watching on the replay or you listen on the replay, leave me a hashtag replay in the comments. And just come and join us live one night if you can. Every Monday night, Bar Bank holidays. Uh, there'll be two of those coming up in May, so I'll get two Mondays off. Um, and then he went, yes, but I thought that would be disrespectful. <laughs> He'll be like, right, screw you, Ross. You want you want a Monday off? I'm only joking. Um, but yeah, so just be aware, Monday nights uh, when it's bank holiday, I don't go live, just because people are doing other stuff. Um, and uh, every other Monday, though, I'll be back here, 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. Um, come and join us tomorrow night for Acts on This Answers if you can. I'm going to play out. I've not edited this yet. It might just This might be a disaster, but I've got a video here 
that I've still got a subtitle, but I think Facebook subtitles it for me anyway when I'm playing stuff out live. Um, Andrew, don't worry about being late, mate. It's all it's all good. You can drop into these whenever you want. Drop in and out anytime. Um, but I'm going to play the little trailer out for Act on This Answers. Um, I don't know if it's going to look like this when I finally put it out. I just did a very quick mock-up so I could play it tonight. But this is happening 7.30pm tomorrow night for all members of ActsOnThis.tv. Please, if you can join us live, come and join us live because these sessions do not work if you don't join us live because we need to ask, uh, answer the questions um, that you guys are uh, are answering. And, um, and yeah, final time tonight. Go over to uh, this tweet on Twitter. Should we see if it's kicking off? Let's see if it's all kicking Oh, it's kicking off, isn't it? There's loads of comments here. Um, go over to this tweet on Twitter and let me know what you think about self-tapes. Um, Alice has put a lot of comments on that. I'll read those later, Alice. Um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of lot of people talking about cell tapes. Basically, Olivia Coleman said in an interview that cell tapes are disrespectful and rude. Um, and I've got nothing against Olivia Coleman at all. I think she's great, but I just thought I don't agree with that personally, and it's fine. People don't have to agree with me. Um, but I just wanted actors feedback to see what other people thought. Um, so I'll go and read all of these uh, all of these comments on it. But yeah, um, Ross A Grant on X, formerly Twitter. Um, go leave me a, uh, a comment. I would love to know what's Carl saying there. Thank God for self tapes. I've been down about a grand in, uh, I'd be down about a grand in rail fares this year alone. Yeah, honestly, they are good. They really are good. Unless you are, you know, very, very well known or very, very wealthy. The accessibility that cell tapes give, you know, especially to other people as well, like in different geographical regions and people with disabilities, um, you know, talking to Ruth Maidley, BAFTA nominated actress, she's fantastic. But I was talking to her just about um, uh, Ruth, a wheelchair user, just about the um, the notice sometimes she has to give rail companies that she will be using the trains as a wheelchair user. Um, you can't. I, it's something that I would never th think about. You know, not using a wheelchair, but like the 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 preparations you have to make sometimes. You know, with trains and to be able to use ramps and have accessibility to get on trains and stuff like a lot of planning goes into it you know now Ruth's amazing you know she's she, she's an in-demand actress um I'm sure you know she could be flying up and down the country all all week auditioning for stuff um but cell tapes would make it a lot easier accessibility wise you know for people like that as well so there's a lot of pros like I say they're not perfect at all I'm definitely more pro tape than against tape um but i would love to know your thoughts and if you think you know the complete opposite that is totally cool as well and uh and that's all good just let us um just let us know definitely sarah says i avoid trains as much as i can for this oh for this very reason oh, okay sarah yeah yeah it's um no honestly that i was like amazed really just how much more difficult train companies make it um you know for for disabled people i'm visually impaired so um I sort of I, I get a little uh, discount on train tickets and stuff myself, um, and get to sit in seats that mean I don't have to go through loads of big crowds and stuff like that. It can be really useful for me, but um, you know that's a, it's still a task in itself. Navigating train stations for me is a freaking nightmare. Um, when they're busy, really, the amount of things I bump into and fall over it's horrible. Um, but at least you know I don't have to give any notice I'm going to be on a train or anything like that. And Ruth was like, "Yeah, there's lots goes into having to book trains and telling people." what station you need to get off at and having a guard on there that can can help you get on and off and stuff. Um so self tapes alleviate all of that. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm pro pro tape, definitely. Um no I don't want to go my I'm gonna stay on here. <laughs> I'm gonna stay on here forever. Maya says I'd say go home Ross, but you are home. I am home. My bedroom's only through here, Maya, it's fine. Right, I'm gonna play this uh, trailer out for tomorrow. This is happening tomorrow night. I'm gonna love you and leave you folks. Thank you for being here. It really means a lot. Have an amazing week. Love to you all. And hopefully this plays. If it's a disaster, forgive me. I think it'll be all right, though. I'll speak to you in a bit. Until next time, bye for now. Actors, listen up. Have you got acting career questions that you desperately need answering right now? If so, I want to invite you to this week's actonthis.tv member-only feature. We call it Act On This Answers. And it is taking place on Tuesday, the 9th of April at 7.30pm on Zoom. And it's a chance for all Act On This members to jump online for a mammoth two 
hour coaching call where Petch and I will hopefully give you those answers that you so desperately need. If you need advice on agents, headshots, showreels, marketing yourself, contacting casting directors, building side hustles, literally anything that is going to help you push your acting career forward faster, we are here for it, aren't we, Petch? Tell them how we they can get are. involved. Well, it's the same as every week, Ross. If you're not a member of Act On This yet, where have you been? Come along. It's easy to sign up. Just head over to www.actonthis.tv forward slash live. If you are already a member, don't you worry. I will send you your notification with your Zoom link on the day. Love it. There will be an opportunity to jump on camera, potentially, you know, ask a question, even anonymously, if you want to, um, if it's something on agents or something like that. Um, whatever you want, basically, we are here for it. Any questions that we can answer for you that's going to help you push your acting career forward this year. We've been doing this 14 years. I don't think there's any question that we cannot answer, to be honest with you. Um, Petch, at this moment in the trailer, normally when we have a special guest on, not that we're not special... <laughs> Um, I normally ask them a question that puts them on the spot. Well, because we are our own special guests on this week's uh, Member Only Call, um, do you want to ask me the question? I certainly will, Ross. Why don't people want to miss this call in particular? Well, I've thought of this, right? April the 1st, it's gone. It might be April the 9th, okay, when we do this call. So it's not April Fool's Day, but obviously, <laughs> it's very cheesy. You would be a fool to miss this session honestly come and test our knowledge um make us look like fools i bet you can't be there act on this forward slash live